Hi everyone, Affinity Photo. What a great alternative to Photoshop it is. Over the next few months, I'm putting together a series of guides on my YouTube channel for you. I've got loads planned, so do subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications when fresh uploads go online. Once you've seen one of the videos, if you want to skip this intro, then just check the timestamp down below in the description and you can go straight to the tutorial. Now once opened in the photo persona, if you go over to filters and then down to plugins, we have the Nick collection here and go into Silver Effects Pro. This opens up into my own custom library here, so don't get worried if you don't see anything like this and you will come in with a preset library and these are the base presets. Be very careful with these, some of these are very harsh and I prefer to make my own presets or work on the right hand side here. And I know a lot of people will just go down here and flick on some of these and say well that's the one for me. If it does it for you that's fine, don't worry about that, you do what you want, it's your picture and the look that you want. Let's go back to neutral and let's work on this from the right hand side. So we know we've got a blue sky here and Filters in Silver Effects work in the traditional way when you used to put filters on your camera um, for black and white film. So if you want blue to dark and then you go with a red filter. And we'll take a look at that. We've pulled that down a little bit and you'll find that Nick Silver Effects color filters are less harsh than what's working within the black and white module of Affinity. If you do like that overstructured look, be careful with it, but you've got the whole set of sliders here, so we can take a look at adding some extra structure in there. Already you can see some glow happening, and this is what you've got to be wary of. Take a look down here and along here, and I see that quite a lot with monochrome print competitions. And we want to keep things natural. If you want to put a dark sky in here and make it really, really dark, there's no better way than actually doing a physical cutout. It takes time, but it's the way to do it. And you will see that with some of my architectural shots on brutalism. I have posted a video on YouTube, my brutalist work, and where you see really dark skies, they've been done with cutouts just to stop this glow. Go back to structure and a little bit of structure if you feel you need it. Zoom in a little bit. If you need to work on the blacks and whites, do go in and just keep an eye on the shadow areas. And we can look at amplifying those blacks. I'm gonna leave the whites alone. I think the contrast is fine. So brightness I'm happy with, contrast I'm happy with. Uh, we don't want to overdo the structure. You know, there's good detail there in the file anyway. Tone to protect it on the colour image, but if you are worried about these, you can go and use control points. You get a zoomed view down here. If you look down here, you want the loop and histogram open. Keep a look down here, and when I put the control point on, we can see what tone it's going to go on. Open up that work area. And we can take a look at the whites. and that brings them down quite successfully. We could turn around and say that we need to maybe open up these blacks as well. So let's put another control point into these blacks here. And we'll open up those blacks. I think this is a little bit on the dominant side, so we'll take a look at darkening this down, and certainly the easiest way of doing this, rather than control points, as we've got a range of tones here, is to bring in a gradient. So coming right down to the bottom, and we're going to look at burning the top edge. So there's the top edge there. Don't know what the strength is going to be, but we're just going to pull that up for the moment. Take a look at the size and also the transition. So 
I'm going to pull that in a bit more on the size. Just adjust that transition. Now we'll bring that strength back. I'm going to check what the transition does and whether we can help just with the top edge there, which I think that does. Just going to zoom out a little bit. And I think maybe just a touch on the bottom edge as well. So pulling those in. This isn't going to be much of a transition, so we'll just bring that in a little bit. So pushing that too far and then bringing it back until we're happy. I'm getting a little bit too much on this corner here, so that size will reduce. We've got a natural gradient from the sun coming across here, and I think that works well because we've got highlights down here. That's the direction of the sun. Everything is saying the sun is over here, and that looks quite natural. If you like borders, you've got your image borders there. vignettes but generally use them very very subtly if you want to pop a tone in one of my favorites are the coffees and I still think Silver Effects Pro has the best film grain going so if you enjoy film grain do take a look at this and it is very very close to the real thing compared to Photoshop and other post-production software so let's have a little play with the grain while we're here. Yeah, that grain looks fabulous. And really, you've got to put something like this in print. So there you go, you can see we've gone through quite a good transformation using Silver Effects Pro still. This is the older version, it's not the latest one, so it does work still in Affinity. You just need to add it to the plugins in Preferences. Let's click on OK. Now I think that's ready to print, but just remember that the first print is quite often still a test print, even though you've got a calibrated monitor and you've got profiled papers, sometimes you still need to just assess that first print and say, yeah, I need to go back, maybe do some dodging and burning a little bit more or change a couple of things and then do your final print. I hope you've enjoyed this. It shows that Affinity Pro is a great platform still for using Silver Effects Pro if that's your preferred way of working in monochrome. I printed out a test print on Permajet fiber-based gold silk Baraita paper, a gorgeous paper with some lovely creamy undertones for the whites. With the test print off, I was a bit unhappy with the coffee coloration, particularly on this paper. So I took it back to black and white so I could really get those creams coming through from the paper base. I also felt that it was a bit on the dark side after seeing the final print. Although it matched on the screen, I just wanted a bit more coming through on those lighter tones. And again, that was really related to this cream base of the paper. So a little bit of dodging, in particular on that top end there. And the final image I'm a lot happier with, and I even quite like the way the sun's shining through the window onto the paper here. Although that's not on the final print, but it certainly gives some ideas for some light painting at a later date.